my favorite part of the uh, of this fundraiser. This is when we uh, give a shout out to people who are doing really amazing work in the state of Texas, which is, as you know, God's work. Uh, each month we highlight a tyrant's foe, and it's someone in Texas fighting the good fight, speaking truth to power, and bringing positive change to the strangest state in the nation. The 2012 Tyrant Foes include the following folks, and uh, some of them are here with us tonight, and I'm hoping you'll raise your hand uh, if you're here with us. Um, Anne Darvon, and please forgive me if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Paula Post, Carlos Spector, we know he's here this evening, uh, Scott Odierno, Alexandria Overton, Carlos Rodriguez, Charhanda Cox, Ed Kruger, Elsa Caballero, Melanie Oldham, Shetty Faf, I saw Shetty earlier. Shetty, yay! Thank you for coming. And Patricia Scott. Um, each year, the observer community chooses one of these tyrant's foes to be the people's friend, an award that includes a thousand dollar award and, and public recognition for the work that they've done. This year, the people voted to award the People's Friend to Carlos Spector. Thanks to Carlos, uh, his lovely wife Sandra, and his daughter Alejandra for coming all the way from El Paso to be with us tonight. It's my pleasure to introduce Carlos as a recipient of our People's Friend Award and thank him and his wife Sandra for coming all the way to be with us. Um, since 2008, when unprecedented violence, at least since the Mexican Revolution, began to overtake Mexico, refugees began to pour into El Paso and Texas. Few attorneys were willing to take these cases because they're tough to win and costly to undertake. But Carlos and Sandra immediately got to work and devised ways to win Mexican asylum cases, most of which have been pro bono. So far, they've won 16 cases and represent another 154 clients saving hundreds of lives. Uh, but going beyond that, they took things a step further by creating a nonprofit called Mexicanos in Exilio, Mexicans in Exile, which is a nonprofit that raises funds for trauma counseling, housing, and other refugee needs. And they arrange speaking tours so that asylum recipients have a chance to educate people about the reality of Mexico's so-called drug war which increasingly is targeting journalists, human rights leaders, and community activists. So without further ado, I'd like to ask Carlos and his wife, Sandra, and his daughter, Alejandra, to come to the stage and accept the People's Friend Award and a big round of applause. And I will now ceremoniously hand the $1,000 check to Carlos and he will then speak to you. Well, first I'll give it to my wife. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll try to be as brief as I can. Uh, of course, I want to thank my, my wife, Sandra, who's been an activist for many years from Kingsville, Texas, and my daughter, Alejandra, who now lives here in El Paso, I mean, you know, here, in, here in Austin. In 2008, when President Calderon unleashed his war on drugs, uh, he sent the Mexican army to the north. With that came terror and abuse. Immediately the numbers of murdered Mexicans and disappeared Mexi Mexicans uh, spiked. Also during that period of time we noticed that there was a series of human rights murders and kidnappings that were occurring just as the Mexican army came north. And so we started taking cases of, of people fleeing all parts of Chihuahua. A reporter from the center, central part of it, an activist from the border, who had one thing in common. The Mexican military had killed their family members, uh, massacring uh, eight of one family member who had a long, uh, long term involvement with, uh, with activism and human rights in, uh, along the border. And so we started going through the newspapers and found out that from the period of 2008 to 2010, over 50 human rights activists in Chihuahua were, were murdered with not a single arrest in none of them. 
And the only thing they had in common was that the Mexican military was involved. So we, d we drew the connections and started taking the asylum claims. The initial ones we won, uh, the Salazar family, which was covered by the Texas Observer in, its, uh, in, in the only way that the Texas Observer could do. It brought to life the thousands and thousands of murders that were occurring and are occurring in Mexico and gave it a human face. A million dead is a tragedy. One, one murder is something that is covered. And so we took it upon ourselves to begin representing these individuals. And shortly thereafter, in 2010, I received a series of death threats and guns pointed at my office sent by the Mexican military. Of course, they were thugs, but at that point, we were only naming the Mexican military as the culprit. And so to this day, the violence continues in Mexico, unabated in spite of Peña Nieto's pretty face and pretty presentation of a different social reality in Mexico. Over 100,000 Mexicans have died, unheard of, sur surpassing the murders and the disappearances of Chile and Argentina. We are really facing the human rights crisis of our generation in our hemisphere, and it's not the world. And to this day, the Mexican government, the U.S. government, collude in concealing that. There's very little that we could do as individuals and communities <coughs> other than to help these individuals as attorneys fleeing uh, murder and seeking justice, exile, and ultimate stability. One of the few things we can do is to start looking at the Medina plan. Billions of dollars to the Mexican uh, government from, from, and the military from, from the U.S. can be stifled, can be cut if there's a documented abuse and political pressure from within this country to withhold monies because of the human rights abuses. It's still relatively unknown even in El Paso. It's something difficult to stomach, something difficult to understand, but the, the Texas Observer has, has, has contributed to that. And, and I really do, uh, do, do suggest that for those of you who haven't read it, read Melissa Del Bosque's piece in Guadalupe. <clears throat> it's a town that we opened the doors to. That's where my mother is from, a little village in the north where I grew up. Uh, during the summers and something that's dear to us, but she brought it to life and as it is dying and The only way that we as a community as a state and as a nation Can continue to monitor this is through events like this and through the coverage through the press Which really few a few agencies throughout the country are covering and for that I thank you for the for for your coverage for the existence of the Texas Observer and for having us here tonight. God bless you.